Hello class, this is Mr. Hart, and in this podcast we want to continue our discussion of motion. And up to this point with motion, we've been looking at very specific cases where an object's only moving in one direction, either moving to the side or moving up and down, but it's always been one-dimensional, only been working in one direction. Now we want to look at two-dimensional motion, okay, or cases where an object's moving in both the up and down direction or and the left and right, okay. And so we want to be able to model these situations. And so one of the most common cases with, is with a projectile. For example, in this picture right here, we have a, a cannon shooting some object, you know, a distance away, and it's going to hit the ground. Okay, and we want to be able to figure out how long it's going to be in the air, how far away from the ground it's going to hit, that type of thing. Okay, and it turns out in two-dimensional motion, it's really nice because we can treat each dimension or each direction as separate parts of the equation. Okay, or do separate equations for each direction. Okay. So, for example, in this case, we have the object falling to hit the ground, and we have the object moving to the right. So we can actually treat each of those um, directions separately. So we look at the equation for it falling straight down, and we look at the equation for it going to the right. Okay. In this case, we'll call this the y direction, like we do in math, right? How far, far up or down it went, and we'll call this the x direction, how far to the side it went. Okay. And so when we're doing any type of projectile problem or any problem in two dimensions, we treat each motion separately, each dimension separately. We look at the y direction separate from the x direction, okay? And so it turns out we can use the same equations, okay? So for example, when an object was falling, we still use the y equals one half gt squared equation, okay? That's gonna tell us how tall this object or this cliff is or how long it takes to hit the ground. And then we can treat this one with the equation that we had before for velocity. Velocity equals x over time or displacement over time. Because there's no acceleration in this case, it's just moving at a constant velocity in this direction, we can use this equation right here. Okay, So how we do it is we solve this equation here and then we can plug it into this equation here and get both the y direction's motion and the x direction's motion. So we want to make sure we have these equations down, um, and this is how I would write them out. Um, again, this equation on the top is just a rewriting of the velocity equation I had written down a second ago. Velocity equals x over time, or change in x over change in time, right? Um, and so if you just rewrite this, bring the time over here, you get this equation right here. But we usually use this version because it's easier to see it written out this way that there's the x coordinate and the y coordinate or the x directions motion and the y directions motion okay so this is how I'd write them the x direction or x motions position is equal to the velocity times the time and the y directions motion is equal to one half gt squared just like before okay um, and so we solve one of these and then we'll plug it into the other and we can get both the x coordinate and the y coordinate okay um, just as a side note, sometimes you'll see a very small x written down right here, okay? That just means that you're looking at the velocity specifically in the x direction, okay? Specifically with, like, projectiles, you'll have some type of object that is shooting out of, like, a cannon, for example, or some type of gun or whatever it is, and so you're looking specifically at that velocity in the x direction, okay? So if you ever see that notation, that's, that's what it means, but it's still the same equation, velocity times time, okay? Let's go ahead and try a sample problem. So a cannon shoots a cannonball at 40 meters per second off a 50 meter tall cliff. Okay, We want to know two things. How long does it take to hit the ground and how far did the cannonball travel? Okay, So this is kind of the same scenario as what was drawn before. We have some cliff. Okay, There's a you know, cannon at the top of this cliff. Okay and it's shooting something out and we want to figure out where it's striking the ground. Okay, And so we know a couple of things. We know that the cannonball shot out at 40 meters per second so the velocity is equal to 40 meters per second. Okay, And again we could denote that this is in the x direction Okay, because it's shooting in the x direction out of the cannon. And we also know that the cliff is 50 meters tall. Okay, so we know something about the x direction, we know something about the y direction, 
So we can treat each of these separately for solving these two parts. So how long does it take to hit the ground? That's a y direction question, right? We're looking at the time of free fall to hit the ground from the bottom of the cliff, okay? And so we're looking for time in this case, and we're going to use um, our y um, direction equation. Now, if you remember from the last podcast, uh, or the last lesson, we rewrote that equation with the square root of 2y over g so that we could solve for the time. If you uh, don't remember that, go back to that podcast to learn why that was. But we can solve for the time with this equation, the square root of 2y over g. So we plug in what we know, the square root of 2 times the meter, or the cliff was 50 meters tall, so times 50 over 9.8. You plug that into your calculator and you get that the total time was 3.19 seconds. Okay. So we use the y direction to determine how long it's going to fall. Now we use that information for the x direction. So how far did the cannonball travel? We're going to use our other equation that we wrote down, that x equals the velocity times the time. Okay, in this case, the velocity was 40 meters per second. And we now just found the time of free fall, which was 3.19 seconds. Okay, plug that into our calculator. And we get that it will hit the ground 127.6 meters away. Okay? Double check that the units are correct. Seconds cancels out with seconds here, and that leaves us with meters. Okay? So there we go. We have our position that will hit 127.6 meters, meters away from the cannon, and it took 3.19 seconds to fall. Okay, so we just treat each part separately and we can solve these types of problems. All right, so let's try another situation. So in this problem, we have a boulder rolls off a cliff and it takes two seconds to hit a spot 20 meters away. Okay, so again, we have a similar situation. We have a cliff. We have a boulder that rolls off the cliff. And again, it's striking some distance away. But this time, we know slightly different information. Now we know the time is two seconds. And we know that the spot it hits is 20 meters away. So we're given the time and the x position. Okay. And so now we can still use our same equations, but we may need to rewrite them or look at them a little bit differently. Okay. So how tall is the cliff? We're going to want to use the y direction now. How tall would it be up and down? So that's the y direction. So we want to use our y equals 1 half gt squared equation. And yes, we do know the time, so we can plug everything in. So that's 1 half times 9.8 times 2 squared. We plug that into our calculator. And we get that the cliff is 19.6 meters tall. Okay, So that's our y position, or how tall that cliff was that the boulder started on. Okay. And now we want to know how fast it was rolling before it fell off the cliff. So now we're looking for velocity in the x direction. Okay, so how fast was it rolling off that cliff? And so we know that velocity equals change in position or x over time. Okay, and again, this little x right here just means I'm talking about the x direction. You don't necessarily need to have it. Okay, but that's a way to write it. So, but now we know the change in position and we know the time. So we just do 20 meters over the time, which is two seconds. And that will leave us with 10 meters per second. Okay, so there we go. So now we can figure out how fast it's rolling off the cliff and how tall the cliff was. Okay, so that's all we're doing for this homework is we're practicing um, using the projectile equations as I call them just you know treating the x direction and the y direction separately and learning how to figure out what information you're given so when you do these type of problems just make sure when you look at the information you determine if it's for the y direction or the x direction okay and in class we did a lab um, we call it's called the hit the target lab and your goal was to actually apply these principles that we learned on projectile practice where you knew the speed of a marble and the height of a table and you had to tell me where to place the target so that it would hit the ground at the right spot. 
So if you didn't have a chance to do that lab, make sure you go to the class website and do the makeup lab that has the data for you, and you'll have to do the calculations. Okay? We also had a homework assignment, which was just called projectile practice, where you just practice doing problems similar to the ones we did here. Okay? But hopefully that all makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions, and thank you for watching.